God, I hope this is recording. And it is. All right. Sorry if I look like a dumbass. If I don't know if it's recording. All right. I am back. Jesus, I'm about to. I am leaving the dealership for good. The clutch feels really freaking weird. Um, wow, it feels weird. Very stiff. Pedal goes all the way down, which is strange. Um, let me get out of here. Racking is nice, nice and stiff. Um, give you guys a see what's going on here. These people are probably glad as hell to see me go. So, all right. First off, I'm going to this video. I'm going to I'm going to talk until this video ends. I probably got 16 minutes. Um. Oh wow, it feels so weird. I got. I can't even drive manually anymore. The clutch feels strange. That's all. Um. It's just weird. I don't know if it's just because it's a new clutch, but it's like it it's just feels strange. So let's just take some time to get used to it. I'm not going to get up on it. I'm actually going to reset the mileage right now to break it in for 500 miles. All right. So basically, I don't know what the last video is I said, but I contacted Subaru of America again, talked to a different guy this time. He was kind of uh, not as polite and he was pretty rude, actually. As the he wasn't as nice as the first lady I talked to, so I told him, "Hey, listen, my car's been there this long. I can't get a hold of anybody there." So he called the dealership, got a hold of the manager. The manager says, "Give me one more day on it." So Friday comes around, which was Wednesday when I talked to him. Friday comes around, the guy from Super America calls him back, tells me, "Hey, um, your car's fixed, uh, but they noticed another noise in the back." when they're turning and braking and they're trying to figure that out. If I want, I can go get my car. But I said, well, if it's making another noise, I said, that wasn't doing it with me. I said, what if I get home? I said, it was been there for a month and a half. I said, what if I get home? There's an issue with it. I said, that should be their responsibility. So I'm not gonna go get it yet. So I just basically hung up on him. He, he didn't seem like he cared really. Um, so I went ahead and called the, the manager back. I was really nice to him. I told him I was. He basically told me that the whooshing noise is 100% gone, um, which it is and it isn't. So it is way better. It's, it is it is pretty much gone. It does it a slight, slight different, like uh, just a little, little, little bit. But basically what they did was, because I've had so many calls and texts and even the girl I think was confused. Basically what had happened was they replaced the racking the second time. And when they replaced the racking the second time, the noise went away. It was the racking that they installed that was defective. So it wasn't anything about grease, it wasn't any of that kind of junk. Um, I was right, it was the racking, okay? I said they either messed up something or they screwed up something with, you know, or it was defective, but I was right, it was defective. So basically, um, they were trying to figure out this other noise. Now, this other noise, I haven't heard it yet. Supposedly, um, he called back uh, after he said, after I talked to him on the phone, he says, give me a, a day or two on it. I gave him another day or two after, he, after I talked to him on Friday, the manager. He basically tells me again that they can't figure out where this noise is coming from, but when the guy Nate comes in, they're gonna get all ears and uh, eyes on it and figure out what's coming from. So he calls me eight o'clock this morning, or 8.30 this morning, tells me that they've been, that this guy, Nate, has been chasing a ghost. Basically, I, the manager is very, very nice, but obviously this mechanic, I'm sorry, I don't think he needs to be there. This mechanic was freaking out about a noise that he was getting when he was stepping on the brakes and turning. Well, anytime you depress the brakes, and you let off on them a little bit, you're gonna have a little bit of a noise rubbing. That's what this guy was hearing and that's that's what he couldn't figure out. So I think even the manager was a little embarrassed and the manager knew that the guy did wrong. So he basically goes ahead and he tells me, he says, um, you know, go ahead and come up here and get your car. I said, all right, and I explained to him about you know, what was going on with Subaru America and this and that. He says, well, 
it doesn't matter how long your car's here. He goes, Subaru America's still gonna pay for it. I said, no, no, I said, I don't know how much you know about the story, but I explained to him how I've been there four times over the last three years. They keep replacing the throttle bearing. It turns out that my pressure plate was defective. And I said, Subaru was only paying so much. And I said, I was actually quoted a price that was actually wrong. And he goes, well, you know what? I wish we'd have talked earlier. You know what this guy tells me? He says, when you come in, I'm gonna make sure that you pay the price that you were quoted, which was 450 bucks or better. I get up there, I didn't have to pay for anything. I walked out and basically saved. It, it was, it was. they quoted me, like I said, Subaru America told me at first, um, you pay 450, we'll pay the other $900. The dealership here told them the wrong price on parts, so I would have had to pay $800. After I told the manager that, he says, nope. He goes, as long as we had your car, and he goes, all this mixed up, and he goes, I'm just sorry it took so long. Uh, he goes, uh, all the problems you had, he goes, uh, I'm gonna make it better for you. I didn't realize when I got the phone, he told her just to bill it, like just to cash it out. I don't have to pay for anything. So I text her on the way here, telling her, hey, I'm on my way to get the car. Uh, she goes, Jason called you? I said, yeah, he called me. I said, then he's gonna talk to you about a price too. And she goes, what price? I'm like, oh Jesus, God. She doesn't know about it yet. So I went ahead and told her, I said, well, he said he was gonna match the price that you originally gave me or better. And she goes, no, it's already cashed out. You don't owe anything for today. So praise whoever. It, you know, maybe it was meant to take this long because if I would have went back a week ago or got mad and, and picked up my vehicle, I would have paid probably six to 700 bucks you know at the minimum and I would have been out of that money so but as of right now the car feels fine it does feel a little strange to me because I haven't driven it in a month um, but only thing that feels strange is that is the clutch now it's not it's it's kind of stiff a little I guess if I if I go to take off I have to rev it up a little bit better uh, are a little bit higher than I normally would before I could just take my foot off the, the clutch and it would start to go a little bit. Now, it, it doesn't do that, but now whenever I go push my clutch in to basically shift gears, I have to push my, it, I just feel like it goes down further and further. I, I didn't do that before. I don't know if that's good or bad, so. But they did replace, I haven't looked at the papers yet, but I know they replaced the pressure plate, the flywheel, the clutch, the 2018 upgraded clutch, the bearing, uh, something else, and then they redid the racking for the second time. So they basically did almost $3,000 worth of work. So I was gonna get gas, I'm not gonna get gas, I just wanna get out of here and go home. I should have enough to get home, um, I hope, uh, unless I hit really bad traffic. But my plan is is to get home, run it on E, pull over, get some Octane Booster, put that in there, and then fill up with 93 because it has sat in for a while. And I don't have any knock or anything right now. It's just the regular 1.4 you get with the AC being on. But it, it, you know, it's been sitting a while. So, but my thing, everybody, you know, the 62 people that watch the channel, some are for, you know, collectible, some are for concerts, some are for cars. The guys that are listening for cars, basically, my opinion is, is that this guy that was working on my car didn't know what the heck he was doing. That's honestly my opinion. I think he felt that it wasn't important. I guess the noise wasn't important with the steering rack. It took me getting a hold of Subaru twice and getting a hold of the manager for them to go ahead and replace the racking and do all this stuff for him to take it seriously. I haven't heard any noise back there. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not saying it's not there. But when I get closer to home, I'll listen for it. But as of right now, I'm not going to come back up here unless something catastrophic happens with the car uh, within 60,000 miles. So I got a good 13,000, 14,000 left before I reach that. Uh, it's going to be a while. So, um, yep, yeah, that's it, I guess. Is, is that a, no, it's a Lancer. It's not a real Evo. But, um... I'm not gonna get up on the car like I said. I'm happy to have it back. I'll do a walk around with the car when I get home. I'll check everything out, check the oil. It has sat there for a while, so I don't... They did clean it. It doesn't look clean because I threw everything in here, but um, it smells weird, I'll tell you that. 
So, yeah, that's it. Um, I feel like I should be saying something else. I am kind of ecstatic that I didn't have to uh, pay for anything. That was that was a good thing. Um, my other half just lost her mom the 12th. That's my mother-in-law. So, you know, we're dealing with, you know, different things right now and stuff. And um, I don't know. So it's just one less thing that I have to worry about. I don't have to pay out of my pocket right now to, to pay, for, you know, come up, come up with that much money. Um, that's it. So the only time I will turn this back on is if for some reason I hear some horrible noise just to document it. But as of right now, she seems to be doing good. But I will put that Octane booster in. I've never used it before. Also, yes, before I close this out, I'm really thinking about getting an intake. So, if I don't get an intake, I'll get a bypass valve. So, I know both of them sounds really good together. I don't really want to mess up anything with the mass, mass airflow sensor. So, I may, and I am in Florida, I know people have gotten away with intakes here. But, I've heard good things and bad things about them. I don't know if they really make a difference by themselves. But maybe with the tune and the exhaust, it may do a little bit. I know they sound badass. So, and I had one with my old cars, so they do sound great. But I'm really thinking about either getting a bypass valve or that. The bypass valve, just because that straight up, you don't have to uh, do any type of tuning or anything like that. And um, I looked quite a bit of videos up. It looks like there's a little bit of work involved replacing it. Look at this guy, what the hell? Look at this guy. He's that impatient, he couldn't wait two seconds. Um, I'm so glad that squeak is gone too, on my, my pedal. That's just amazing. We will see how long this lasts. Um, I'm not trying to be negative, but hopefully this was, that pressure plate was causing all my trouble. Um, they said I needed a new clutch. I really don't know if I did or not. I mean, I doubt they were lying about it but the guy wasn't the brightest gentleman ever. So if I did need a new clutch, I'm sure I'll find out down the road when I actually break this in and I start flooring it and getting up on it. Cause there was a couple times where I did drive it and I would kind of like gun it in third or fourth gear. And it wasn't like it was slipping, but it did feel, it didn't It didn't look right on the RP, like with the speed. It just, it looked like the, the speed was just sitting there and the RPMs were raising higher a little bit so that, that may have been a sign of it but it didn't do it all the time so I really never thought anything about it but I am closing this out gang forgive me I'm gonna block you out for a second